All right, let's play the clip again for those who are now joining us. We're going to play this viral video of waiting on you know, the, the super indie spot. So here we go, everybody. And if yeah, you're an audio listener, you're just going to get cool music in your ears for about 30 seconds here. When you're waiting for a super indie to finish doing that move. Every time I watch it, I find something new in that video that I got to ask about. <laughs> <laughs> it's your intro. No, it's never my intro, Joel. What are we doing? You're no, the you're the course. you're the host here. No, you're this one's yours, Jeremy. Please, this one's yours. All right, from the video you you just saw, uh, this the the viral man himself. He, he wrestles in OVW and uh, other independent promotions. He is the veteran Jack Vaughn. Jack, how you doing? Hello, I'm I'm wonderful, gentlemen. Which it's a great. I did great already. I already. Uh, I messed up the third word that I said. <laughs> but I'm doing great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I mean, let's let's go ahead and talk about this clip. Where did the idea come from? When did you have this idea? And how did you put it all together to like, all right, I'm going to do this and put this out there. So that particular video, it's funny because like some videos that I think like that I put a lot of effort into, I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be great. And it's going to get tons of plays and then it does nothing. And then there's stuff like this where I really the way it started was, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that do that particular spot on on television now uh, where they just jump up and down between the top and middle ropes. And I was just kind of like, man, like that's such a, to me, it's a, it's a silly spot and it really doesn't make any sense why you wouldn't just pull them off or, you know, why the guys, why you're just sitting there like holding their hand, holding them up. So I uh, just, you know, it was just one of those like little, I saw it on TV or maybe I saw another clip of it on TikTok or something. And I just decided to kind of poke fun at it. Who was that sitting there at the end of the video with the popcorn? <laughs> I have no. It was a random fan at the show I was at. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I said, everyone. I guess, I, they're probably probably one of the VIPs at the show. Gotcha. <laughs> it's like I see I have something new every single time I watch this video. Like you, you pull out your phone, and the first thing I'm like, "This guy's a vet, but he's got a giant ass phone for a throwback." <laughs> I didn't. I you know it's funny because uh, a few people pointed out the uh, the lady walking in the background. And uh, I didn't even notice that until I was done editing the video. And I'm like, well, I can't fix it now. <laughs> what is what has the reaction been like? I've I've seen a lot of quote tweets, and most of them, I could be wrong on this, um, but most of them seem like it was like, oh, this is funny, like you know, po poking fun. Like they they took it in good stride, good humor. Mm -hmm. But I saw a couple of like, what do you know? Like you haven't done anything type of thing. What it what have what has the reaction been like to you? For the most part, it's been positive. Uh, I, it's it's like you said, most people are even... I've had a lot of people that are like, yeah, I like that kind of wrestling, but this is still very funny. It's still, you know, it's obviously just kind of poking fun and, ha you know, and having fun. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm used to negative comments. Like, this is definitely not my most controversial video that I've ever put out there. But, uh, you know, for the most part, the reaction has been pretty positive. So I'm doing my research on you and I see that you wrestled 99% in the U S and then all of a sudden Finland pops up. Yeah. What, how did you end up wrestling in Finland? What was that? What was that like? So I, one of my best friends is a wrestler by the name of Jake Oman. He's from Indianapolis and he wrestles all over the world. So uh, he actually just got back from Peru. He's, I think he's done a total of like 25 countries now. And it was just one of his trips. And I said, Hey man, like before I'm done wrestling, I want to go on one of these trips with you. And he's, and he was like, okay, well in, uh, in November, I'm going to Finland, Estonia and Sweden, if you want to come. So I was like, okay, let's go. So that's kind of just how it came about. Um, he had some hookups with some promoters out there and that's, it's really, uh, not as exciting of a story as it, as it could be, but, uh, <laughs> but wrestling in Finland and, and Sweden was, was fantastic. The fans out there, it's almost like the opposite of the United States where, 
if you are from another country, you're automatically a heel. You go over there and they love you for being an American. You, you've, <laughs> you've wrestled a dog collar match. How, what was that experience? And it was in Ohio, so I'm sorry about that. But what was <laughs> that experience like wrestling a, in a dog collar match? Because there, there aren't too many of them in, in wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, so that was probably my favorite angle that I had ever been a part of. Um, it was with a, a guy by the name of Cody Jones. And we built up this, you know, three, four month long story uh, at a company called War Wrestling, which stands for Wrestling and Respect is the name of the company. And, um, you know, my whole gimmick is that I'm the, the old school guy. I want things to go back to the way they used to be. And Cody is actually a second generation wrestler. And we kind of built up the story where, you know, I was telling him that his father would be ashamed of him for, you know, choosing to do this more modern style. And um, his, his father is, is passed away. So uh, it was basically just me kind of like poking the bear. And then we also did some stuff where uh, I attacked his wife, who was another wrestler by the name of Paloma Star. And uh, it just, you know, it, it really had a lot of heat. And the thing about war wrestling is that their fans are still very old school. Like they, they love the, the baby faces and they hate the heels. So um, as soon as I started, you know, talking about his dad and when I was, you know, hit his wife with a big lariat, they, uh, they were fully behind him. And uh, so the dog collar match itself was, I think, uh, one of those gimmick matches that was necessary. I feel like a lot of times, you know, we throw in street fights and no DQs and stuff like that for no reason. But I think the, the dog collar was justified for that angle and uh, it went really well. Did you draw any inspiration from, from other dog collar matches in, in particular? I watched them, but I tried not to do anything that they did because I feel like that's an, an easy trap to get into. Is you see uh, gimmick matches that don't happen often and you want to decide trying to outdo them, but I wanted to kind of make it our own. Uh, also, you're talking about gimmick matches. I see a taped fist match. Explain that. I mean, I, I assume it's literally a taped fist, but are you are you doing outward tape and then putting glass shards on it? What what's a taped fist match? Uh, no, it's it's just a just just plain old uh, white wrist tape. Um, the the story there being that uh, you can throw them harder, so uh, hitting a hitting a punch in the match is much more devastating. You you mentioned uh, you know, your your gimmick being the more old school type. I mean, your nickname is the veteran. I see here, and you can tell me if this is incorrect, trained by Shark Boy uh, and, mm-hmm. and Roger Ruffin. So what was the, the training like and getting that kind of old school mentality when it comes to, to your style? Well, if you don't know Roger Ruffin, he is a, an old school guy himself. Um, you know, he was a, his, uh, I guess you might know him. He was a referee with the WWE for a little bit. He actually, uh, refereed uh, Roddy Piper versus Bret Hart at WrestleMania 8. It's one of the bigger matches he had been a part of. But uh, he's an old territory guy. Um, so obviously, you know, I, he just taught me what he knew, which was the old territory stuff. Uh, and then Shark Boy, um, most people are probably familiar with him. He came up in the Cincinnati area, trained by Les Thatcher, another legendary uh, territory guy. So, um, you know, the training that I did, I started off with Shark Boy. And his was more of a training camp rather than a school. It was like a set set amount of time. So it was about four months before it was kind of designed to give you the basics before moving on to like a, a more proper school. And, um, you know, Shark uh, is not as hardcore as some of those uh, like Les Thatcher or, or Roger, but um, he gave us the basics. He gave us what we needed. And then uh, going with Roger, you know, that's, he's very old school minded. So it's all about storytelling. It's about psychology and, it's about not uh, wasting your moves. Pivoting back to TikTok and social media, um, talk to me, how important is it for TikTok and other social media for professional wrestlers like yourself nowadays trying to uh, get yourselves out there and more uh, with the audience? I wish that social media didn't play as big of a part in getting over for wrestlers as it does. Um, I wish we could all just get over based on our ability, but that is the way the, 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 the world has gone. Um, actually when I, when I just, I don't know, uh, if you found this in your research, but I did quit wrestling for a few years and then came back, uh, full time about 2019. And, uh, when I did that, I was like, with this gimmick, I'm not going to have any social media. Like, cause an old school wrestler, why would he want social media? He's not going to be on TikTok. Um, 
but it was one of those things where I eventually realized I had to. And uh, it is, it is a very useful tool. I mean, it's, there's a reason I've been wrestling for this long and people are just now starting to discover me through social media. Um, so it's, for me, it's been great. Um, you know, it's, it's a great networking tool. It's gotten me, you know, uh, bookings. I have uh, bookings coming up pretty much on all different parts of the country based on people who have found me through social media. So it's, it's, for me, it's been fantastic and it's a very useful tool for wrestlers if they know how to use it properly. You've mentioned, uh, that the the super indie move was not your most controversial video, and I've seen some other ones, uh, specifically the Adventures of of the Shady Promoter. But mm-hmm. what what is in your mind your most kind of controversial video? So I have a series of videos I do called Indie versus Professional Wrestling, and that one seems to, um, especially early on, those videos used to be very controversial. Probably the most controversial one was the one that I did about punches versus forearms. Uh, I got a lot of feedback from that one. I had a lot of people trying to tell me that, you know, punches are illegal. And, you know, there's a reason that, you know, if you're in a real fight, you're going to use forearms and elbows instead of punches. And um, so, yeah, that was probably the most controversial one. That was uh, pretty early on, but I got a lot of, a lot of hate for that one. What, what are your thoughts on the, the thigh slap? (laughs) Uh, well, for me, it's quite the moneymaker now. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I threw it in my videos the first time to just kind of poke fun at it and to make fun of it. And then it's something that I would throw in videos periodically. And then the people that watch me just kind of caught on to it and they love it. And now if I don't throw one in, a, in a, a video, I, I'm sure to hear about it. Um, but in general, the, the thigh slap in matches, I can't stand it. It's so blatantly obvious. And, you know, I'm not a proponent of actually trying to hurt guys, but I am a proponent of, you know, laying stuff in to the point to where you don't need to make any sound you know, or any additional sound like slapping a thigh. So, yeah, personally, I'm not a huge fan of it other than the fact that uh, I put it on a T-shirt and people buy it. <laughs> you're, uh, you're working quite a bit of TV with OVW. And, uh, of course, it, that, that's a little bit different than working an independent show that maybe doesn't have uh, cameras rum, roaming around or at least a professional production team. Uh, tell me, what, which do you prefer more or is there something that you find more beneficial working TV versus uh, a non-televised independent? I can't say that I prefer one over the other because I think with uh, on an independent show, a, a non-televised show, you have a little bit more freedom. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I'm a big stickler on sticking to your times. And when you're on TV, you have to do that. Um, I've, you know, had issues with that when, uh, in my time at OVW where, uh, you know, the ending of my match once didn't get caught on camera cause we went a little long. So I, uh, I haven't made that mistake since then. So, um, but I think, uh, you know, for everyone, if, if you want to, if you're looking to, to be a professional wrestler, uh, on television, if you're trying to make it to like one of the big companies, try to find one of the smaller companies that does live TV because learning that style is going to be beneficial for anyone. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, I don't want to say a culture shock because I don't think it's the right term, but uh, it is much different for someone who, like me, uh, spent so much time wrestling independence to go to a company that runs live TV and realize how much more strict you have to be on everything that you do. When it comes to creating uh, these TikTok videos and things, how much planning and preparation goes into it of like, oh, this is this is kind of trending right now. Let me poke fun of that. Or is it just like, oh, I think this is kind of silly. Let me just let me poke fun at that. For So my wife kind of keeps track of all the stuff that's trending. I haven't really done anything. Uh, I've only done like maybe one or two videos that kind of caught on to trends. Um, and actually, since you guys have started the show, I actually posted a new video that actually does, uh, it's actually on the, the Bill Hader meme that's big on TikTok right now. Um, but other than that, for the most part, uh, my ideas are just stuff that, you know, I have a list on my phone that's just full of ideas. And, you know, whenever I have the means to make that idea into a video, I try to take advantage of it. But uh, I don't honestly put a lot of planning into it. Um, you know, the... Most of it has to be pretty simple just because I have to be able to edit it quickly. There are a few things where I use some green screens and I could just do that on my computer. But for the most part, the videos don't take that much planning. 
as we uh, start to wind down, and we thank you for your time, uh, what are your what are your goals moving forward? I mean, you're you clearly caught uh, a few more eyeballs with this TikTok, and you're you're still mm -hmm. out there working. What's uh, what's next for Jack Vaughn? Well, like I said, I got a lot of good stuff coming up. You know, I have shows coming up in Florida and you know uh, Utah, New Jersey. I got all kinds of stuff coming up. Uh, going back to Europe in the fall, and then uh, you know my ultimate goal. You know, I'm I'm 37, so and I'm I've stayed relatively healthy my entire life. So um, my ultimate goal is to eventually catch on with a national company. Doesn't necessarily have to be WWE or AEW. I just would like at least one run on a national platform regardless of which one it is that's my ultimate goal and i feel like i'm still young enough and healthy enough to where i can be uh beneficial to a company and i think the gimmick itself uh lends itself to uh being a, a really good heel on uh on television so hopefully that'll work out someday to, to piggyback off that real, real quickly before we do actually wrap, you have shared the ring with the likes of Carlito, uh, Rhino, Brian Myers. Any any advice from them and, and EC3, like any advice from them uh, coming from the world of television and then, you know, being part of that environment? You know, honestly, I, I haven't, I never really took the time to, uh, you know, we would talk about our match and stuff, but never, uh, would never discuss like, Hey, like, what's, what's it like in the WWE? Like, what do I need to do to get there? That sort of stuff. But, uh, you know, uh, all of those guys that you just mentioned were, were fantastic to work with. Um, and, you know, unfortunately I didn't have that, uh, that particular discussion with them, but, uh, they were all fantastic to work with and, and I had a lot of fun with them. Jack, we appreciate your time. Let everybody know where mm -hmm. they can, uh, find you at on social media and coming forward. Yeah, so uh, pretty much every social media, you can find me at Vet Jack Vaughn uh, on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram on that. And then on Facebook, you can just find me at Jack Vaughn. Uh, it's a picture of me with my, uh, my black ring jacket. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Thank you again, Jack. Everyone, again, if you haven't seen the, the video that we've just played or the other videos he just mentioned, he just dropped a new one. Go check that out. Go follow him on social media for, for more training videos and support Jack moving forward in his uh, wrestling career. Again, thank you again for your time this morning, man. Right. Yes, thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, there you go. Jack Vaughn.